Well, it's day 20 in our series, 30 Days to Natural Diabetes and High Blood Pressure Control. I'm Dr. David DeRose. I'm, I'm your guide. And although I'm a medical doctor, my role is not to play physician for you, but actually to give you instruction to help you get your blood pressure and blood sugar under better control, working, of course, with your health care providers. Today's no exception. Our title is Maximize Magnesium. Maximize Magnesium. Now, some years ago, I was getting excited about magnesium and had one of my healthcare workers, I think it was one of my nurses, instruct a patient on the use of magnesium. Now, this patient was not taking very careful notes about the instructions, and all they heard was that magnesium was good. They went to the store and they picked up a common form of magnesium called Epsom salts, and they looked at the side of the box and um, they said, oh, for oral use. And I mean, it's hard to imagine that someone wouldn't read all the instructions, but I guess they were in a hurry. And so they took the oral dose, which I don't know, was some crazy amount of magnesium, maybe half a cup or something. Uh, I think I'm exaggerating, maybe several tablespoons. But anyway, they take all this uh, Epsom salt. And what do you think happened? They ended up spending a lot of time in the bathroom. Magnesium in large amounts is a laxative. So if you've got healthy kidneys, the main problem you'll have with too much magnesium is just uh, getting more familiar with the uh, restroom than you'd like to be. But my goal is not to clean you out. That may be useful if you have a problem with constipation, and we, we sometimes use magnesium that way, but that's not my goal. We're talking about high blood pressure and diabetes. The reason I preface my remarks today about talking with your doctors is it's really important in this one because if you've got kidney disease, magnesium will get you into problems because of it. Well, it can just build up in your body if your kidneys are not able to uh, to handle it. So two big problems with magnesium. One is if you've got kidney problems, you should not be taking extra. And if you just take huge amounts, you can have a laxative effect and that's going to clean you out and that's really not what, we're, what our goal is. So what can magnesium in judicious amounts do and, and what are we talking about? How much? Um, put it in perspective, we're talking about something like the range of one tablespoon of milk of magnesia. That's about five, what we call 500 milligrams of elemental magnesium. You'd get the same amount in a couple of um, couple of pills, like 400 milligram magnesium oxide pills. That puts you somewhere in that same ballpark range. And what they've shown in the research is when you get over about 400 milligrams of magnesium intake, we call it elemental magnesium a day, you get a significant blood pressure lowering uh, benefit. Uh, in our book, 30 Days to Natural Blood Pressure Control, we have a whole chapter on nutritional supplements, things that can help you lower your blood pressure. It's chapter 12. And in chapter 12, we highlight magnesium because it's generally very safe, again, unless you have kidney issues, and some amazing benefits. Not only does it help to lower blood pressure, but the evidence indicates that magnesium has a role in preventing diabetes and helping with blood sugar control. So it's a real important one. Listen to some of the other benefits that we list. Higher intake of magnesium is associated with lower risk of heart disease death and including lower risk of death from sudden heart attack, okay? So if you want to avoid causes of sudden death, magnesium is on your list. Listen to this one. Magnesium can actually help you avoid migraine headaches. So if you're a chronic headache sufferer, my, uh, magnesium can be part of the equation to help you. And then um, did you know that magnesium may even help with osteoporosis? So here's the challenge today. I want you to increase your intake of magnesium for the rest of the program. I know we don't have a huge amount of time ahead of us, but magnesium can make a significant benefit both with the blood sugar and the blood pressure. You say, but Dr. DeRose, I, I thought this was all natural. Supplements are artificial. Well, kind of depends on your definition, but we'll, we'll take it at face value. You want to get it in the form of food? Well, we've got a resource for you too. Figure 5.4 in our book, Magnesium Champions. What do you think? If you go through the USDA database, just look at single foods. We're not talking about things that are supplemented or some uh, you know, product that has a bunch of magnesium added to it, just naturally occurring. What do you think's on that list? You want me to run through some of the top 15? You've got things on that list like uh, 
a variety of beans, like soybeans making the list. Um, you've got rice bran. You've got pumpkin seeds. You've got uh, other beans on there. You've got uh, Brazil nuts. They're all plant foods. So as you eat more plant foods, and if you strategically eat more of the magnesium champions, you'll be in the driver's seat. I'll try to make a point after we've got this posted to stick a copy of uh, figure 5.4 uh, into the uh, resources for you so you can just click on that link. Don't forget to subscribe because we're continuing to update these. For example, when we roll this out, we may not have all the, the graphics connected with it, but uh, keep in touch with us. If there's something else we can add to the resource, let us know. If you're a subscriber, you'll get updated when we update the videos. Well, that's day 20. Another key to success when it comes to better blood pressure and better blood sugar. Dr. David DeRose, I'm back with you again tomorrow. Please join me.